number 11 and uh, we're still in lockdown oh but it's okay we at least we can get out and we're getting some way yeah getting somewhere, getting somewhere. buy some beers yeah. <laughs> okay here we go then uh question number one what's the difference between a triple crown and a triple tiara this is quite a cute question. It is, actually. yeah. I didn't actually think I about it before. I only found out the difference this week, to be honest. Really? So yeah. I thought, yeah, that'll make a nice question. Yeah. Second one. Who is the latest 2020 Triple Tiara winner? <laughs> okay, that's going back to the last question. So who is it? Who is it? Yeah. Question number three. The Vodacom Durban July has now been rescheduled. What date will it run on? It's a good job. You know why, don't you? They couldn't get the horses down here in time. Due to all the lockdowns mm -hmm. and fiasco. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've recently started a new free training video series. What is the topic of these videos? They're all following a certain theme mm -hmm. and um, they're well worth knowing. So head over to the Inform Racing Facebook page and give those a watch. Yeah, no, they're good, but they're, they're popular. They within, are. within an hour, 150 people have seen them. Sure. <laughs> Hot shot over here. Hot shot, okay. Question number five. The weekly Sporting Post publication, called The Sprint, is now back in action. Which day of the week is this published? I didn't know that. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, I get yeah, a, no. a question or two from that. Well, I didn't know till last week that they weren't actually doing it in print anymore. In print, yeah. This is now the weekly. They've been doing articles right the way through lockdown, but they haven't been doing their weekly sprint. Okay. Question number six. Eden Rock won a, won a really great race this week in the Grade 2 Post Merchants at Scottsville. What? But, yeah, what's his increased merit rating because of that? Yeah. It's already high. Now it's just gone a bit higher. Yeah. Question number seven. Question number seven. Of the 52 entries for this year's Durban July, there are five horses with an official merit rating of over 130. Can you name three of them? That's good, but they only get one point if they get all three right. Yes. Mm, you're tough. <laughs> Off you go. Question number eight. Which dual South African horse of the year has now returned to action at Fairview last Friday and is in contest for the final leg of the World Sports Poly Challenge? Great horse, if it Bremner trains it. Question number nine. This week there's been a really big racing event that's happened internationally. It's very prestigious. We would like to know which event has taken place. Yeah, it was shown on telly back in the our Frankie, you can't go the winner Frankie. or two yeah, there. No, it's special. <laughs> okay, number ten. Number ten. Now that racing has commenced again in Mauritius this week, what is the name of their race course? You went there for your birthday. Yeah, four years ago now. It's not four it years. Is. Goodness, uh, yeah. time flies. Uh. Number eleven. Who is South Africa's only trainer to have won over a ten million rand in total prize stakes this season? There are a couple hot on his heels with nine million in tack each, but this mm. one is only with over ten mil. Slow down a bit with the with the lockdown. Um, break, uh, yeah, okay. Pretty sure they've got enough money there. Don't <laughs> Number twelve, true or false? Pumalela have terminated their contract with the suppliers of sectional timing. Hmm, you love sectional timing. Well, they didn't publish it properly. They didn't publish it. In a way that I, I didn't actually see it published, quite honestly. But it must have been, they were keeping it at the back, I think. Question 13. Which Teletrack presenter was formerly a jockey? Hint. It's a lady. It's a lady. Yeah. She's very good as well. She is. Mm. Lovely lady, actually. Mm. Number 14. Which company has come to Gold Circle's rescue this week? With a 40 million rand unsecured loan. Wow. Lots of dash. Must have needed it. Indeed they did. Needed it, okay. Okay, name the horses in the three following questions from the, from the emoji. Ah, this first one's cute. It's a nice emoji, this. Mm. And the second one? What do you think of that? I know it. I, well... I can't see it on the screen, you can. <laughs> <laughs> and number 17 emoji. 
I'll go buy that one. I think they should get it. Okay. All right, a few seconds less for that one. Get it right. Right, number 18. All right, then. The bookies, when you bet with a bookmaker, there are certain bets that they'd like to take and they don't like to take. Now, which is the least popular bet that they'd like to take? Is it a win bet, a place bet, or a place double? Which ones do you think they don't want to take? And I'll tell you why after. Number 19, what tax do bookmakers deduct from winning bets on horse racing specifically? Mm. Which leads us to number 20. Which, uh, sorry, number 20 is how much is the tax on sports bets? So it's a different huh. to, to horse racing bets. I didn't know this. Ah, if you're a sports betting fan, you'd be pleased to know this. <laughs> Shall we go to the answers? Shall we? Go to the link. Okay, on to the answers. So we have answer number one. And what's the difference between the tiara and the tiara and the clown, eh? This is, of course, the triple tiara is a phase equivalent of the same triple crown, and the legs mirror each other. Well, the little horses, they wear the tiaras, and... Yeah, ladies wear tiaras and men, men wear, wear crowns. crowns. Nice and easy, eh? Right, who's the latest triple tiara winner? The hint there is that it's obviously a filly, and it is summer pudding. Do you know? I think we have some, we've had summer puddings in, in <laughs> nearly every week. <laughs> summer pudding has been announced. We're promoted by the Right, <laughs> well, the vote to come July. Now, it's been postponed basically from the first Saturday of the month. It is now the twenty fifth of July, and this allows trainers to get their horses because they're only allowed to move them once from one place to Durban to get it. Okay. Really exciting. We're all looking forward to the Durban Shall, aren't oh, we? Betting's out. Really? Yeah. Going to do some tips for it? Mm hmm Ah. Okay, I've just started training video series, mainly on form grids and about form grids, but there'll also be some other interesting ways that I'll show you how to study form. I'm not charging for it, and a lot of people don't understand how to study form correctly, and there's one way to do it. Watch well, your videos. My way to do it. <laughs> Yeah, do it on Form Grids. So you can find this on the front page of Form Grids website itself, or you can head over to Inform Racing Facebook page where all the videos will be published free of charge. I'll even put it on uh, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Plenty of spots to find it. At the uh, number five, the Sporting Post publication called The Sprint is back. What day of the week was it? Well, it's every Wednesday afternoon. Okay, so. If you're looking forward to seeing that, that's when you can see it, once a week. As we mentioned last week, they have discontinued their printed publication, so it's now only available online. Eden Rock. That won a great race this week, but you know as a two-year-old it was a top horse, and this year it hasn't shown much form until this week. Then it flounced home. And its new merit rating has increased from 110 up to 115. Mm. Pretty high. It is high, yeah. Answer number seven, we asked you to name three of the five horses with a merit rating of over 130. This, of course, could be any of the below. Do it again, Rainbow Bridge, Hawam, Vardy, or Socrat. Yeah, they're, they're top, eh? All of them are top. Indeed, they are. Um, Question okay. number eight was, which dual South African horse of the year is back in action at Fairview? Mm. That is? It is League Legal, Eva Gremner. Didn't win last week, but to have it back in action in, uh, is, is fabulous, eh? It's getting on a bit, though, eh? Indeed. This week in England, it was Royal Ascot, which is the answer to number nine. It's fantastic racing. But guess what? There's nobody there. It's behind locked doors again. Can you imagine it's a the atmosphere? Ghost race course. Yeah, can you imagine the atmosphere? Normally, Horrible. Uh, normally in Ascot, like that, you'd get ten to twenty thousand. Wowzers. And now there's nobody. It's rather sad, sad. actually. Sad. Really sad. Yeah. Number ten. Where is the race course in Mauritius, and what's it called? This, of course, is Champ de Mar in the capital Port Louis. I was there four years ago on my birthday, so it's, it's four years yesterday. Indeed. And I, won, and I won lots of money on the exactors there. You did? Yeah. Huh. Put some bubbles with it. Definitely. Who is SA's trainer? Who is South Africa's only trainer with over 10 million rand in prize stakes this season? 
That is, of course, Mr. Sean Terry, and he's sitting on a whopping 12.8 million rand total price sticks. That's a lot, eh? It is. Mm. Shows his worth. Mm. Okay, this is a true or false one about Pumalella. Have they terminated their contract with the suppliers of sectional timing? And the answer is yes, they have. They, they said, oh, it was inaccurate data and generated by the system when it was in use. But in actual fact, I couldn't find where it was published. I asked all over, and I don't think it was published for us, mere, mere people who put the money on. Mm. Mm. Or study. Or study. Answer number 13. Which Teletrack presenter was formerly a jockey? This is, of course, our lovely Nadine Rapson. Yeah, she, now she's confined to Fairview. And she was also a, a jockey at Fairview for Alan Cliff. Some time ago. Long time ago, yeah. She's good though. Answer to number 14. That would be the leading bookmakers Hollywood Bets who have swooped in with a whopping 40 million rand loan to Gold Circle. Oof. They support racing in all, all sorts of ways. It's really good. Yeah. They're excellent indeed. Right, you know, your emojis. My favourite. The first answer here is Master Keys. And the answer to the number 16 is Captain's Girl. That's a nice one. It is. And last, number 17, that would be Warrior's Rest. I wonder if anybody got all three this week. They, they never tell us, do they? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got all three, we'd love to know. <laughs> Number 18, the answer to number 18 is the place double. Now, I'll tell you a little story behind that. In England, if you tried to do a place double on two horses, the bookies would not take the bet. You have to have the win double as well because they know that the place double is so profitable that, you, that you, they're hoping you, you lose the win bet. Right? But in South Africa, you can actually get the place double on. It, you, on the tote, you, it used as an all to come. Mm -hmm. The bookmakers, you take their place bet, then find the multiple, they call it multiple, multiple. and do it again on the second. And it's, uh, it's a bet that I do frequently, yeah. and I've now introduced it to my members as well. So I'm now giving my members who subscribed place the, the place double, and we're over 2,000 up on that and this just, just over this week. That's excellent, actually. Yeah. Of course, it could be done manually, but that's, that's a lot of effort, isn't well, it? Well, if a bookmaker closes your account, which is one of my clients, yeah. because he was doing that, what he's got to do is put the bet on singly, yep. take the winnings, and, and stake, and put it on the second one. Bit of a pain. Yeah, I bet it, it's, it, it, it's often, it keeps the price higher, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? Because when you've got a lot of place doubles going through, yeah. right, the set, the, if it's on the tote, is the more money in the pool on that horse, and it's automatically lower odds. Oh. But the bookmaker wouldn't know that, so a bookmaker would get a higher price. Great stuff, that's good to know. That's easy, yeah. Answer number 19. What tax do bookmakers deduct for horse racing? Okay, they take 6% of your winnings. Okay, so that, that the, the bookmakers don't get that, they pass it on, but it's 6% of your winnings goes to them. And if you're having the sports bet, which is the last question, there is no tax, betting tax, or deducted from a winning sports bet, whether it's football or anything else, it's only on horse racing. Did so you, know you've, that? no, I didn't. So mm -hmm. that's zero percent there. It's yeah. you're getting an extra six percent winnings then. Well, kind of. Other way of looking at it is you're getting six percent less on the other one. <laughs> <laughs> We're <laughs> preaching to horse racing punters, yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed. I hope you got lots of uh, answers. And how about sending us a few more questions in? We're not getting many public questions. Getting lots of views, but not too many comment feedback. Uh, you know, within half an hour of yep. this video coming out, there'll be just under 150 people who have seen it in the first half hour. It's amazing. Huh? Okay. Thanks again. Don't forget to like, share and comment. And we'll see you next week. Cheerio. Bye.